All right. We continue to have some folks joining, um, but I think in the interest of time, uh, we want to make sure we can maximize our time today here with our wonderful experts from HCL Tech that are calling in from around the world. They also are a very global team calling in from many places. So thank you for being here, some of you quite early in your morning, <laughs> um, or perhaps uh, spending your evening with us on a Saturday. We really appreciate having you here. Um, so with that, again, want to just officially welcome everyone uh, who's here. Um, welcome to our thematic workshop. Um, these, uh, this is actually one of our first core thematic workshops that we've even hosted in the PLUS program. Um, so we've been very excited to partner with HCL Tech on hosting this session um, with them bringing their technical expertise um, on sustainability. And for those of you who participated in some of the 2022 programming, you probably saw or had a chance to interact with different experts from HCL Tech um, or other parts of the HCL group um, around their core focus on biodiversity, conservation. We're lo looking at source to sink, and we're excited today to actually be working with and partnering um, with the group focused um, on sustainability writ large and really elevating to look at sustainability broadly in that lens. Um, so we will get to some of those key areas in just one moment. Um, but uh, in true Unleash Plus fashion, we uh, we host a lot of workshops um, and virtual sessions in our online programming with the Plus um, teams uh, each year. We've been doing this for a few years now, and this year was our first virtual environment. But we're excited to be welcoming many new people uh, to this workshop today from the community, and we would like to take a moment to actually uh, start off the way we do many of our PLUS sessions um, by welcoming and thanking uh, our partners um, for being here. So we usually ask that we will do a countdown and we have all of our participants unmute and we are just going to say welcome in our local language. We are a global program. We often are calling from all over the world. Um, so we'd like to take a moment to also honor that tradition um, to, to welcome our uh, tech tradition, experts. Uh, so to, in to one moment, I'm going to count down from one three, moment. ask everyone to uh, uh, unmute and say welcome in your local language. So we'll go in one, go in two, one. three. Herzlich willkommen. Excellent. Well, thank you all so much. Um, if you didn't get a chance to unmute, please feel free to also post in the chat. Um, and also, please continue sharing. If you're just joining and you haven't had a chance to introduce yourself yet, Please go ahead. Let us know who you are, your association. Oh, so excuse me, association with Unleash and in your participation where you're calling from today. Um, with that, we're going to just take one brief moment to also introduce ourselves uh, in case you don't know us. Um, my name is Ariel Berghammer Ziegler. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm the lead for the Unleash Plus program this last couple of years. Very excited to have you here. Lakshmi. Hi everyone, my name is Lakshmi Hiranandani. I am an Unleash alum and I'm an Unleash program manager uh, working on the PLUS program and it's super exciting to see all of you. Uh, Hi everyone, this is Raj from the Unleash team. I uh, have been working with the Unleash PLUS program in 2021 and 2022, making sure of a wonderful experience and I've interestingly been a talent in every single Unleash program. Such a delight and pleasure to see all of you here today. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Bryce Watson, and I'll be working with the Unleash Plus program this year as well. Great to see everybody. Excellent. Thank you all so much. Um, and I think one of the really exciting things that both Raj and Lakshmi highlighted is that all of our team, actually, we have all been talents. We've all been uh, facilitators and supported different parts of the program. So I think from a community perspective, especially those of you just joining the Unleashed community this last year, um, I think it's really nice for us to also showcase that for you all so that you also are seeing um, different ways and different paths and avenues that you can continue engaging with the Unleashed community um, in, a variety, in a variety of different and unexpected ways, whether you're an entrepreneur, an intrapreneur, um, maybe calling from a partner, a lot of different ways to continue remaining part of Unleash, even if um, launching a startup may not be um, what you're interested in doing. But of course, if that is your goal, then you know we'll be speaking to a lot of that today as well. So 
Today, our goals for the day are really to take a moment um, coming off of the phenomenal program we, we had in 2022 and our plus teams, especially as you are really looking at kind of what is that next evolution of your organization. Maybe if you're coming out of a hack or a lab, you're thinking about where do you go from here to bring your solution forward. How can we think about in whatever stage of maturity or part of the process that you are in, how can you integrate a sustainability lens and a mindset throughout that solution development as you're looking at your business model or creating your operational systems? And how does sustainability have a role in each element of that? And so how are we going to do this today? We are going to invite our partners and our, our experts from HCL Tech that are here with us today to really talk about how HCL Tech has put sustainability at the core of their business and then how they actually live that and operationalize that mindset and those um, sustainability touch points throughout their work and how it serves as that guidepost. And then we're going to invite them to share their own advice and expertise in their work and throughout their years of experience in different technical areas um, with all of you so that it can help guide you and, and help you think about where you're going from here, no matter which stage you're at. And so just to dig a little bit deeper quickly before we, we dig into the rest of the session, we will um, continue with a little bit of a welcome just to ensure we're all on the same page and everyone has a solid understanding of why we're here today and what you can look forward to. We'll then be welcoming Christina Hurden from HCL Tech, who's the Director of Sustainability to help us set the stage with her opening remarks and to share their experience from the organization and her personally. Then we will open up a panel discussion with our four experts today from HCL Tech, who each are gonna to speak to a different area of the organization and technical expertise to share about that sustainability mindset and some of those key technical areas that we really look at in our PLUS program and how that impacts your ability to launch your startup. From there, we're going to take an opportunity to actually go into breakouts where you all are going to get a chance to engage with our experts more directly in smaller one-on-one -on -one sessions for about 20 to 30 minutes. We'll then regroup together for some share back and reflections. Then we'll close out with some final remarks, key updates, some exciting news about things you can be looking forward to in the Unleashed community. Um, and then, of course, if there are any key questions, our team is happy to stay on. Um, but I do want to reiterate that the purpose of the session is really to focus on the thematic workshop um, and, and plus is hosting this as a chance for the community to see, you know, how some of these workshops uh, operate, what are some of the things that you could look forward to if you were to consider applying to the PLUS program and to allow our, our PLUS alum um, from this last year and past to have a chance to continue on their journey and continue receiving support from the community. This is not a space um, to focus on some of the logistics or maybe the other moving pieces coming off of, of last year. There is time and space and there are teams for that. Today, we really want to engage and maximize the time we have with our experts. Um, and so with that, I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Raj. Thank you very much, Ariel. With such a far back beginning, I think we're all super pumped to learn more about the sustainability implications today. And before we jump into uh, further programming of the wonderful HCL Tech panel, I would take the liberty to go through a couple of housekeeping items. Ariel, if you may have the next slide, please. So as goes the ritual in the Unleashed programs, virtually, we make sure that all of us know who we are and who is joining. So I request all of us to please update your Zoom names in this particular form. You can put the name, the organization. Here you can also interestingly put maybe the year or the program that you join in Unleashed. Next to that becomes your name. So if I am Raj, I put Raj and the name of my company or the program that I join in Unleash, it's Unleash Raj dash Unleash. I request each and every one of you to please put that in your particular names. Ariel, if we can have the next slide, please. Awesome. So before we also delve into further programming, I would request that each one of you, if you need to, please make sure to turn on the live transcript options that will be available in the bottom of your screens. Upon request, it will be turned on and it will make sure that each one of you is able to have a completely inclusive experience. Now, before we jump into our exciting keynote address from our partners at HCL Tech, 
we want to take a moment to briefly talk about what Unleashed Plus is and why we are hosting this open session for our fantastic community. Well, hundreds of solution concepts and early prototypes are created during Unleashed programs, including the annual innovation lab and the local hacks. In addition to the significant number of social impact ventures launched globally each year. This early stage teams require additional tools, skill sets, mindsets, networks, and funding that can help them effectively implement solutions and identify a very scalable model to make an important and measurable impact in sync with the SDGs. That is where Unleash Plus comes in and builds capacity and provides the right resources for teams of social entrepreneurs to enable them to reach the implementation of their solutions and prepare for a scaled impact. However, we cannot do what we do without the support of the right partners and experts like LCL Tech. On that note, I'll hand over back to Ariel to introduce our keynote speaker and kick us off today. Thank you so much, Raj. Um, and thank you again to HCL Tech for being here today and for being such fantastic partners uh, who really, truly enabled um, so much of our programming to happen last year. Um, for those of you who, who may be joining from a different year, HCL Tech um, and HCL Group have really been a critical partner in helping all of our own programming come to life um, for 2022 in so many different ways. And they also, hopefully many of you got a chance to engage with them on the ground if you were in India or had a chance to access some of their experts throughout the different programs and things that were offered. Um, but in the purpose of today's workshop, we're incredibly excited um, to actually bring forth our um, partner from HCL Tech, Christina Hurden, who is the Director of Sustainability. So there is no better person to introduce the kickoff and to really introduce the keynote and inspire all of us about the core meaning of sustainability and the importance in um, bringing this into an organization and adopting that mindset and that lens um, than Christina and her role at HCL Tech. She has phenomenal expertise from all over the world. I will not even be able to do her justice by trying to give a quick intro to her bio, and I'm sure she will speak um, to her roles as well. Um, but I was just so impressed and amazed reviewing all of the different things that she's done, the leadership roles that she's had in organizations, the way that she has helped to um, bring her open mind, her global perspective, and her focus on impact um, from the time that she was quite young to every role that she's had. Um, currently, she's with HCL Tech in this Director of Sustainability role, but she uh, has also previously been the general manager of marketing and alliances with HCL Tech. She's got past experience with, I think, some of the most major tech companies around the world. Also, as a, you know, a fellow woman, pretty incredible to see a woman in such a phenomenal leadership role in the tech industry, where oftentimes that can be its own challenge. And so I hope that for other women as well on the call, maybe that's inspiring to you as well. But she is an experienced general manager of market, marketing and sustainability. She has demonstrated work history in transforming information technology and service industry. She brings deep technical expertise in business planning, sales, professional services, management, and pre-sales. Uh, she has an MBA focused on international marketing and finance um, and really just brings just some of the most diverse work experience um, that we could imagine. And I think is just the perfect person to help us set the stage today and really talk about why we're here and also what is HCL Tech doing in this space. So with that, uh, Christina, I invite you to, to come on the, the virtual stage with us and I'll hand off to you. Thank you, Ariel. I'm, I'm so humbled by your introduction. I think it's probably the best introduction I've ever had. So I do hope it's been recorded so I can use it for other opportunities as well. But thank you everybody very much for inviting HCL Tech to be part of this program. I'm so thrilled that we're able to, you know, be, be part of this journey as, as we talk with people from around the globe at different levels of the maturity and, and, and their, you know, career journeys to date. So, just give me a second while I share my screen. <clears throat> so I can, there we go. Please let me know if you can see this. Okay, great. Why is it not great? Okay. So 
thank again thank you um so ariel mentioned that i'm quite quite global i i happen to be german i have an american accent speaking english but i live in south africa and i've been here for the last 19 years um and and just to set the stage very very quickly in South Africa, we have something called load sheddings, which means electricity gets cut off for us for an, a stretch of two to four hours. And right now we have no electricity. So I'm hoping that my Wi-Fi and my battery packs will last while at the very least I, I give you our, our insights into sustainability. I thought it's important to <clears throat> look at, you know, what are some of the sustainability objectives that companies, that individuals, NGOs, different kinds of organizations, um, governments are really looking at, you know, what is an objective for them? Why is it so important? And it really is talking about, I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, it really is talking about, you know, three elements that are hugely important. Um, when we're talking about environmental protection, we're talking about an economic performance, we're talking about social and, and diversity uh, instances. So these are the factors that really um, have to work together, but what we find is that over the past years, they have been in conflict with each other. So there hasn't been really a, a global strategy that says all these, all these elements have to work together so that we have a sustainable future, um, which is of course where we need to be. But it really is when we think about sustainability, it's a long-term investment. And when you work for a big corporate like HCL Tech, you think about how uh, how to implement a sustainability strategy when, when you are looking at a long-term investment, you're looking at long-term um, return on that investment. And sustainability at this point in time, uh, as an initial outline, is quite costly. So it's really, it's really about how do we shift understanding, how do we create awareness, and how do we change behavior so that, you know, for a company like HCL Tech with over 200,000 employees, how can we all talk the same language and understand that, that sustainability is part of our DNA? And if it isn't now, it will be in the future. <clears throat> and of course, it always, you know, what, what makes it so interesting and, and relevant for us is that we use technology to create a better world. We use technology to help our clients uh, achieve their goals and, 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 and address their problems. So, and technology at the same time can really be be used in, in a very sustainable manner to ensure that we're allowed to meet the basic needs of uh, you know, energy, uh, consumption, water, et cetera, uh, employment, well-being of employees, et cetera. So that's just the context of why, HC, uh, why sustainability uh, is actually very, very important. <clears throat> but what are some of the challenges? I, I, I referred to it briefly where uh, an, a sustainability strategy really talks about about changing a company. It's about how do we, how do you move forward? How do we move forward as an organization? How do we move forward as an individual to attain a global goal? And you know, some of these upfront invest investments, while they are, you know, agreed for a, a future goal and aspiration, um, and leveraging renewable resources, for example, it's not so it's not so easy to quickly adopt these strategies, implement them, and ensure that you are compliant. Um, and especially from a business perspective or a corporate, you know, we're really being asked to create these long-term strategies that help to protect the environment, um, support the well-being of our employees, <clears throat> and at the same time ensure that we have a strategy for, you know, the future uh, future <clears throat> generations. But inherently, you know, that kind of bites the tail, um, the snake bites the tail, because at the end of the day, these same corporates are expected to deliver a return. They're expected to deliver a financial return, which is sometimes in conflict uh, with, with an investment strategy from a sustainability perspective. So when you receive these slides, you'll see there are a few links and you can actually look for more information on how to address these, these situations. I mentioned before that technology really is, is from our perspective, technology and, and leveraging technology in a very different way is, is enabling us to become a sustainable organization. It is helping us to become and deliver sustainable solutions to our clients and my colleagues will go into more details there. But if we think about, you know, a sustainable city, um, if we think about next generation infrastructure, if we think about how do we communicate across various different platforms, that is all because of technology. And it's, it's such a wonderful opportunity to be able to 
see how technology and, and innovation uh, changes so, so quickly. But at HCL Tech, I just wanted to articulate, we have four main pillars. Um, and this is very new. This is about three, four months old, where we have really re, re, reconvened our strategy to really supercharge progress and how we leverage technology and our own people with their expertise in order to drive that. <laughs> So we, the, the first element is really, or the first bucket is really about what can we do for our clients? How are we enabling them to deliver a business outcome that is relevant to them, that allows them to keep their lights on? And how do we <laughs> you know, ensure that day-to-day -day problems are minimized? Then of course, our own people. Um, for our employees, over 200,000 of them, we have various different programs to ensure that they are able to supercharge their own career prospects within HCL. But it's not just about career, it's about also enabling that we are able to help them should there be some kind of a crisis. Um, you know, we, we, we all just went through COVID and HCL Tech at that time really enabled and created various different programs for the social well-being of our own employees. And in fact, we actually took that to some of our clients. So the, the third pillar is, is how do we deliver impact to our communities where we live and work and play in? Um, how are we able to drive a longstanding commitment uh, to these communities? What, what is it that we need to create to enable them to, to continue to thrive and, and, and create their own um, success with that? Last but not least, um, my favorite, uh, this is what are we doing for our planet? And it's really looking at how do we deliver impact for our planet, how do we ensure that environmental, oh, I've lost my, my, I've just frozen. Can you still hear me? I can still hear you, but we did lose your slides. Oh, that's so weird. I'm so sorry, I'm coming back, I'm coming back. Here we go, here we go. Oh, it's okay. Uh, for our planet to, to ensure that, you know, the, the, the elements that we, we deliver are going to be uh, environmentally sustainable moving forward. Let me make sure I don't hit the wrong button. And now this isn't working. Okay, so a little bit more detail into, you know, how we're supercharging progress for our own employees and our, our uh, around the globe. We really have um, been very, very, humbled and very lucky to receive so many accolades with regards to what we are doing, what programs we're developing for our people, because it is so important. Um, many, many years ago, uh, one of our former C CEOs wrote a book called Employees First, Customer Second, which really uh, shifted everything uh, around um, because normally the strategy was always, oh, well, the, the customer is king. Well, in this case at HCL Tech, it's about the employee because at the end of the day, we are the face for our clients and every external um, audience that we work with. So we're really very thrilled to, to be, um, you know, headlining some of these accolades that we are, you know, part of a Bloomberg Gender Equality Index, which is one of my personal favorites, because I think we have a long way to go with regards to elevating women. Um, but also, you know, we really do, uh, we really are honored that we are a top employer in 17 countries across the globe. And we, we aim to achieve uh, that in every country that we work, with, work in, and which is over 50 countries, but we'll get there. So very delighted about that. What are we doing to supercharge progress for our communities? I just wanted to share, because I do believe that the majority of the, of the audience here today is from India, is that <clears throat> we really have invested for the last 10 years, a huge amount with regards to what are we doing for the communities we work in. And the HCL Foundation, which is our CSR um, arm for the organization, has really, has really created a trajectory which, where all the other countries within HCL Tech, we are now following this kind of a progress. But really looking at how are we <clears throat> implementing programs uh, around education, sanitation, hygiene, uh, especially skills development for, for children and um, you know, previously disadvantaged people, especially women, um, what are we doing for child protection? 
uh, what are we doing to help the environment, et cetera. And, and, and the HDL Foundation has really been driving this with huge investments as well. And you, know, you can read on the side, you know, $113 million uh, we've been able to invest over the last year and <clears throat> have been able to impact over 5 million um, women. And I'm very proud to say that uh, over 50% of those 5 million are women and, and uh, female children. Um, so, so that's really important for us. And as I mentioned before, we're really looking to replicate how we have been able to deliver such phenomenal programs in India to our countries across the globe. And <clears throat> of course, how are we supercharging progress towards a, a sustainable planet? You'll see in my background, I put some, some greenery up there and not the HL tech background simply because for me, it's so important. If we don't have a planet that we can live on, then it doesn't really matter what we do in terms of technology or, or, or you know, revenue generating activities because the planet does sustain us. So it really is important to us that, that what, the way we act um, as, as HCL tech employees really is, is able to, to implement that. <clears throat> as part of that, we, we've been you know, also working with, with global organizations like uh, we're signatory for the Climate Pledge, uh, we're part of the United Nations Global Compact. Um, you know, we also look at how we how we work to get um, the World Economic Forum, and, uh, and 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 a recent program that we've just started is 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 around. It's a five year program called UN Women and the He for She Alliance. Uh, so that's that's for us how we act to ensure that there's a sustainable future. Um, the pact that we create uh, is really about how do we ensure that how we work together with different stakeholders, um, be they internal or external, be they investors, be they shareholders, be they clients, um, is really that we're able to collaborate and, and develop these paths moving forward around a, around a sustainability strategy uh, in order to help us achieve that because we don't know everything. And we work with organizations like the Science-Based Target Initiative uh, where we work with <clears throat> And we're really looking to, to drive those aspirations through to our communities, as well as how we work and deliver on solutions for our clients. Now, the impact that you'll see, because everything has to have an impact, it's not about saying that we as HL Tech um, you know, are a sustainable company. We have to prove it. And we have to be able to walk the talk and talk the talk um, and really be able to say, we have been able to supercharge progress by de delivering impact. We have reduced our scope one and scope two GHG emissions by 70% in per capita. <clears throat> we have been able to you know, uh, recharge 21 times more water than we actually consumed in, in the last fiscal year in India, which is a phenomenal achievement. And I don't think anybody else has been able to do that. Um, and, and we continue to thrive on the fact that we want to be seen as a sustainable organization. We want to be seen as being able to shape how we work together with our clients around a sustainable um, strategy for them as well. So just very, very quickly, because I'm, I'm very conscious of time, um, I, I wanted to just highlight a couple of areas which are really important for us at HCL. Um, you will all have heard, or you will be hearing a lot more around ESG which is environment, social, and governance. And that is really how an organization is, <clears throat> is rated, is, is ranked around these three pillars. Um, and, and it's quite tactical, uh, but your strategy always has to have some tactical and operational activities. So what we really want to achieve is, is from an environmental perspective is, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. my dogs, I'm so sorry. Um, is really from an environmental perspective, we want to be carbon neutral. We already are looking towards that. We want to be uh, have achieved net zero by 2040, which is 10 years ahead of the time than the United Nations has identified. Um, we want to be able to transition our electricity usage to renewable energy. Now, that is, is not so simple as it sounds because in some countries and even within a sing, uh, you know, one country like in India, each region has a different renewable energy strategy. So in some cases, we might be able to say we want to go 100%. In other cases, a, a, a government will say you're not able to do that. You're only allowed up to 60%. So what we do is, as part of that is we work with each government 
and each entity and each country to ensure that we're in line with their renewable um, opportunities. Uh, social, of course, for us is a huge, is one of our biggest focus areas because we really believe that we need to ensure that all of our employees, all of our 200,000 employees are able and capable ambassadors of, of a sustainability strategy. And one of the things we just launched about two months ago is a sustainability climate change um, education program. And we've just launched a competition internally as well to, to drive change around climate action um, and be able to identify new solutions. So this is something we can probably talk about in another session for a longer time. And of course, from a social perspective, we really want to focus on driving you know, women in leadership um, and elevating women across the various different uh, levels of, of, of leadership within the organization. Uh, I would have liked to have a higher target, but I think you know, making, making a headway into that is, is something we need to start off. And we really want to be, be recognized uh, as, as a top employer who meet all the needs across the globe. Now, of course, all of that has to be governed and has to be aligned to various different reporting agencies, et cetera. And we are, from a governance perspective, really looking at how do we work with our own supply chain? How do we ensure that our sustainability strategy is also implemented and understood and executed by our own supply chain, by the, the partners that we work with? And of course, being identified as an industry leader in, in that space. In order to do that, I thought it was very important to understand, you know, what are the elements that HCL Tech is really looking at? What are the topics where we want to be held accountable in the next five to 10 years, if not longer? Um, and so we, we really identified 12 material topics. I won't go through them all, but it's really looking at what can we do for climate change, et cetera, um, in, in the environmental space. And it's a huge topic. Um, what are we doing from a social uh, angle to ensure that you know we have the right strategy from, from a uh, talent attraction and how do we retain our employees? Do we have the right diversity, inclusion and equity uh, targets in place, et cetera. Um, and then I mentioned again, the from a governance perspective, really important for us is because we're a technology company, you know, how do we ensure uh, security of our technology? How do we ensure data protection? Um, and what, what are we able to do from a procurement perspective to, to move that forward? And just quick snapshots, I, I have a link in here. I don't think it'll work. I did try it before um, because we just came back as a company from the World Economic Forum in Davos, um, where we've been there for the third, fourth year in a row. Um, and I remember we, when we first went to Davos four years ago, that was my, for, uh, I, at that time I was still in, in, in marketing role. And I remember saying to our CEO and to our founder, uh, sorry, our, our chairperson, that we didn't have a sustainability strategy four years ago. We needed to create this. And so one of the wonderful things about HCL Tech is that if any one of us has a good idea, it usually becomes, it usually comes to fruition. Um, and the company will enable, you know, that's why I talked about ideapreneurship earlier, really enables um, ideas to come through and be able to implement it if of course they make sense for the organization. So uh, again, uh, three years ago, we then created the sustainability function um, and we've been really been able to over the last three years create a huge impact already. Um, and we're still climbing to achieve more. Um, you know, it's important that we are able to communicate our achievements and our aspirations. And that also, you know, that we're, be, that we're able to be held accountable for where we are lacking perhaps or where we need to influence a little bit more. So I want to leave you with a couple of thoughts, perhaps. Um, this is one of my favorite quotes from Mahatma Gandhi, uh, who said, there is a sufficiency in the world for man's need, but not for man's greed. So from my perspective, this is really what sustainability is all about, um, is being able to have enough resources from the world, from the planet, that we're able to sustain a future. And that uh, we can do with technology, and that is something that we at HCL Tech are really very proud of how we're able to really shift our own focus and develop and create um, opportunities for our clients moving forward. So 
that's really it from my perspective. And I'll leave you with a thought of how can we help supercharge progress for you? Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Christina. That was absolutely wonderful. And if everyone can maybe use reactions or if you'd like to unmute, but really just want to thank you for that. That was absolutely awesome and a perfect uh, setting of the stage for everything we're going to talk about today. Um, so thank you so much for sharing that. And, and truthfully, even from a personal perspective, I'll just share that even though I've been working with HCL um, on our partnership efforts and obviously had maybe more direct engagement with you all these last few months than others on the call, I still am so impressed and amazed by all of the incredible work that you're doing as an organization from a sustainability lens um, and at so many different levels. I think this was just really inspiring and exciting to hear um, about the way that you're internalizing it and the way that you're honestly talking about it from such an accountability perspective, because I think obviously the goal of this or you know this session today is to talk about this from an organizational lens but to really hear how you're doing that both internally and making it very public and open and that other level of accountability that comes when you're making that commitment to the world and then saying this is something that's so important to us that we want to make sure we're actually holding ourselves to it in a very public and real way so i commend hcl tech for that and i thank you for your phenomenal leadership i mean your role as the director of sustainability and appreciate you making the space to be here with us, even with the load shedding. And please know, <laughs> I can assure you and all of our plus teams can assure you that um, we adopt a very adaptable, flexible mindset together. <laughs> um, throughout our programming, we have teams sometimes pitching in blackouts from their cell phones. So we all just together um, are in it and, and we acknowledge that. So thank you. Um, so with that, I'm so excited to also welcome our additional experts to the stage today, and I'm going to go ahead and just quickly share my screen again, um, just to confirm, can everyone see my screen and only see the, the slide with our wonderful experts? Great. Um, and then I would invite, I think that Lakshmi and Raja are kind of helping make sure that we're making everybody visible here, but I would invite Deepak, Rajesh, and Raj, our other experts here today from HCL Tech to our virtual stage, if you will. Um, and we would like to take a moment to, to really kick off and talk about the next level of this. Um, and with that, just want to ensure I have everything ready in one moment. I appreciate your, your patience as I'm navigating so many screens over here, or maybe windows, not screens. Um, but really, really excited to have um, this transition. Christina did a beautiful job. And thank you again for setting that stage and for really helping us think about um, why are we here today? What does sustainability really mean? And why does it matter to all of us? And with that, we're really excited and I'll bring it into the panel discussion to focus on now thinking about that maybe at a very high level perspective and seeing and hearing a little bit more about how HCL Tech is internalizing this at the various levels of the organization in terms of strategy, operationalization, even down to what does the individual employee do and their responsibility in ways they can engage. How do we now look at that at our early stage social impact ventures and many of you joining coming from a startup, maybe you're coming out really wanting to launch a new idea, bring a concept to fruition coming out of the lab, or maybe you were already a social entrepreneur or intrapreneur. Um, I think that there's a lot that you can hopefully be inspired by here, no matter what uh, role that you're currently playing. But how could we all think about adopting that sustainability mindset and feeding that into the launch and the development of the work that we're doing? How can really we really think about, as social entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs, keeping that sustainability and all of its different um, elements at the core of what we're doing to achieve that greater impact that all of us um, are here because we're seeking that. And so with that, I would really like to take a moment to have each one of our experts introduce themselves. Christina, if you would like to jump in and give another intro, you're very welcome, um, but otherwise very happy uh, for Deepak to also jump in and introduce himself. Uh, Deepak, if you are speaking, um, you are not unmuted yet. Sorry, you're you're still muted. I'm so sorry. All right, thank you. Perfect. 
Thank you. All right. Uh, I'm Deepak. Um, I'm based out of uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, and I come from a small practice within HCL, and uh, it's called uh, Total Experience. And uh, it's, it's a s small center of excellence within HCL that acts as a, a small practice for uh, where we serve some of our internal needs of our various customers around the globe. And I take care of the solutions for the US region. And uh, I'm uh, also, we do a lot of uh, work in terms of, uh, we work with a lot of clients in terms of uh, anything from uh, user experience, research, and uh, um, artificial intelligence, and uh, augmented reality, and uh, you know, virtual reality, and things like that. So uh, that's, a, that's a brief about myself. And I'm quite excited to be here and uh, looking forward to speaking more on this subject. Thank you so much. Definitely some exciting elements of technology and looking to, to future progress. Thanks for being here. Rajesh? Hello. Thanks a lot uh, for this uh, opportunity. I am Rajesh Agarwal. I am based out of Amsterdam, uh, Netherlands. Uh, I come from a division which is called as a digital business within HCL Technologies. Primarily, my role at HCL Technologies is in terms of driving the sustainability for services for the UK and I, EMEA and South Africa region. Uh, so Krishna talk about, uh, spoke about act, pact and impact. So as a part of our philosophy of act, pact and impact, as a part of the pact philosophy, I engage, work with the clients, to come up with a sustainability for, for services, help in their journeys of making their operations sustainable and how we deliver our software or these services to our clients in a very sustainable manner. So that's the two kind of a roles which I play at HCL Technologies. I come up with the 20 years of experience specifically in the financial technology space. I worked with uh, likes of Deutsche Bank and others in the past. And currently I'm pursuing my diploma in uh, greenhouse gas emissions accounting. Uh, and also, uh, I'm a certified PCFD and SBTI uh, profession. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And over to you, Raj. Hi, everyone. Raj Jairaman calling in from Chicago. So I was just telling Ariel it was an early start to my day, but thanks to whoever started coffee. So I think still going fresh, you know. So super excited to be here today. Uh, so my role within HCL is I run our global product management, go to market for some of the solutions that we build. So my passion is around driving innovation. So I'm sure that's what all of the people here are representing, right? So it's really super excited to be here. So my expertise, I would categorize into three areas so you get a context of what I do. So one is the nuances of product strategy, right? So HCL is a services organization, but within that we are a dedicated business unit which actually builds products, software products, right? So my responsibility is understanding what the market wants, and answering the why some, something needs to be done. That's the first part. The second is once you understand the why to do, what are we going to do to solve the problem? And a lot of this are related to sustainability. And the third portion of this is the actual monetization. So now that I've built something, how do I go and monetize it? So that's the scope of my role within HCL and we've launched multiple solutions, delivering close to about 350 to $400 million of revenue right now. So I'm glad to be here and happy to help. Wow. Thank you. Thank you all so much. And thank you for making the time to be here. And I would echo the sentiment on uh, appreciating the inventors or discoverers of coffee. <laughs> um, thank you all. This is absolutely wonderful to have you all here. And I just want to, again, quickly echo um, that each one of you brings such phenomenal expertise across the areas that we often focus on in PLUS. Um, so we're excited for you to help bring also some of that technical lens that will be so interesting and engaging for, for all of our folks calling in today. Um, and so to really kick us off to the next level of the panel, I would ask each one of you to maybe talk about maybe at a personal level, what does sustainability really mean to you? What does that sustainability lens look like for you in your individual role with HCL Tech? And um, maybe we can just kind of follow that same order for this first question and start with Christina and then flow through organically through the rest of, of the group.
So I couldn't unmute, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Sustainability for me personally, I'm, my personal passion is around conservation. Um, and when I say conservation, it's around conserving, you know, the environment, the wildlife, what do we do um, to, to encourage and educate the next generation? So I've, I've started personally a lot of programs for school children um, on, about how to plant a vegetable garden at the school how do we, you know, work with, with different um, entities? And I actually, one of my favorite things, I take school children into, into the wild on safari and I explain to them why it's important that we maintain wildlife um, and that we are protectors of the wildlife because if they didn't exist all the way down to the tiniest little bee, we wouldn't be here. So that's, that's my personal passion. Ariel, you're on mute. Yeah. Deepak, over to you. All right. All right. I, I, I was able to unmute now. Okay. All right. So uh, to me, uh, to me, sustainability is, uh, is something that we learn from the nature. Nature is a great teacher of sustainability, right? So every life that uh, we see, every uh, ecosystems that happen around the world uh, is all balanced and it is able to maintain itself. And only it's just that uh, the agencies that we have bought in as uh, human beings uh, that are not, you know, the the actions that we bring into this world that have not. So to me, you know, sustainability is uh, about, uh, you know, fulfilling our needs in the most natural way. So, uh, you know, today, you know, uh, you can order something, uh, you can order your food through Google Home or Alexa you know, just by doing a voice command. And, uh, or you can order, uh, if, you, if you need a cooking oil or something like that, or if you need to, some groceries, you can make an order online. But, uh, uh, you know, if you, if you literally take a, a, some time, if you do a little bit of time travel there, you know, 40 to 50 years back, we used to get our own containers to, you know, get those, uh, uh, oil from an oil store, which is already, there is an exclusive oil store out there where you had to take your own container and they will fill it up for you. So if you see, if you compare these two, not one, there's one thing that is quite common. The need is still the same. There's no change in the need. The need is to buy that commodity and use it. And uh, today, if this commodity, which is basically the oil, has become more experience oriented where you can order it anytime and uh, you, just by a click of a button, it gets delivered to your place. So, uh, so products are becoming more and more experience oriented and uh, which is uh, in turn, uh, you know, enables people to order more. So when we look at this chain, all right, uh, how do we look at sustainability? from that perspective is what uh, we will have to think in terms of how do we address that product, uh, you know, life cycle chain? How do we bring in change when it comes to that life cycle? So how do we, are we doing research? Are we understanding the needs, the core needs of what the customer basically wants? And uh, are we really asking the right questions during the research phase? Is it, uh, is it uh, is the product very sustainable? Is it uh, do you have protocols in place which which basically ask you uh, in understanding how that uh, product is being developed from uh, until it is deployed and how is it being disposed of? And uh, to, and uh, of course it's not easy, right? Uh, even uh, I we face uh, quite a lot of challenges internally in evangelizing. Uh, some of our customers and, uh, uh, you know, getting this uh, mindset into their, uh, into their core processes and things like that. So, so to do that, we also follow a small process. We, we, we do a human-centered design process where uh, we try and understand, we recommend research on every uh, possibility that we have. And uh, we also you know, try uh, sustainable methods, you know, try do a lot of digital channels there and uh, use a lot of uh, materials 
and a uh, lot of sustainable materials, meaning uh, try, try and uh, low, you know, utilize paper less and, uh, you know, form uh, quite, do a quite a lot of uh, digital uh, alternatives to uh, engaging with the customers. And uh, we also do a lot of uh, uh, sustainability workshops, design thinking workshops, where uh, uh, we try and optimize a lot of uh, existing processes, uh, which are more manual into uh, converting them into, you know, into, to, into digital processes. So to me, uh, it is uh, it, it is it is about collaboration and understanding that ecosystem well, that really uh, helps maintain that mindset within HCL. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's incredibly helpful, and I think a lot of really excellent points to also dig into in the in the breakout sessions with that deep technical expertise and what that means um, on so many different levels. Um, because I think many of our teams here are especially those that are really figuring out where to go next and how to bring their solution to life. Um, your expertise, I think, will be invaluable. Thank you for sharing, uh, Rajesh. Over to you. Uh, thanks a lot. So I look at sustainability from a personal standpoint of view, I like what Krishna mentioned, she used the word on con conservation, but I actually look at it more in terms of in everyday decision making, uh, how do I reuse, uh, recycle or actually uh, consume less in terms of and consume more sustainable products, whether it be your personal consumption decisions, whether it be your personal financial decisions, whether it be your personal travel choice decisions, how do you, how do you make every step uh, very sustainable. That's at a very personal level. I know it's a very hard habit to break through. Uh, there are examples where you don't show a lot of empathy to your employees who are going with a, a tough time from a social point of view, but I think that's a habit breaking pattern, which at a very personal level, I look at it. At an organizational level, I think uh, because of my expertise on the finance and investment side, I strongly believe that the world has been ignoring the cost of externalities, what we what economically is called as the externalities. The externalities means that in the uh, golden era of the last 40, 50 years, we have had no concern for the nature, for the environment uh, as a part of our single-minded focus on the growth and large is more valuable, more efficient is more valuable, has been the mantra and we have really not taken into account into the capitalism, the cost, the, the, the pricing of the products in terms of the damages, which is doing to the nature, to the uh, society as a overall. And with the United Nations SDGs being as one of the fulcrum, the focus has shifted back in terms of bringing that balance. And how do I bring that balance in terms of the investment strategies for our clients who are working in the financial services space? Or for our various different uh, uh, diversified industrial clients in terms of they being able to measure the cost of the environment and the social aspects and transparently report and make strategic uh, changes and drive their own strategy to our software and services which we deliver to them or maybe the new products and services we work and co-create with them i think that's at a very organization level and at a very community level if i were to look at it i really like to uh, engage with people like you who have with beautiful minds who have social enterprises and really work with them so that as a partnership for the overall planet, we can make an impact. To me, progress is more important. Let's not make progress an enemy of the perfection and accuracy and precision when it comes to the topic of sustainability. I think that's the philosophical mantra which I will, uh, with, with which I would like to end this in terms of what sustainability means to me. Thank you. That's excellent and really helpful to hear both sides of that. And I really love that partnering for progress, uh, you know, for the entire planet. Thank you. Over to you, Raj. So to me personally, you know, sustainability is, I look at it as taking a very holistic approach across addressing, you know, the economic issues, social and environmental. Those are the three buckets I look at. But there's always a balance because it is how do you meet the needs of what you need currently, which is the present, 
without compromising the ability of future generations also to meet their own needs, right? Because I think the 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 disharmony happens is either you're too much focused on the future or you're too much focused on the present. So I think that is finding the right balance. It's a difficult, easy to say, but difficult to implement. But I think that is if you kind of keep that as the cornerstone or the North Pole towards which you want to work towards. So that's kind of how I look at it holistically. And I think like Rajesh or somebody also said is being very conscious about your decision making. So whether it is, you know, internally as or as a as a organization or professionally. So we start looking at how do I bring solutions? How do I bring innovation to our customers, which help them reduce their energy consumption, which helps them reduce their carbon emissions? So that is where I'm helping on it professionally. And like we said, everything is done making sure that you're looking at the entire life cycle of products and services because we all are you know we all look at a very small portion of the entire life cycle of anything so but as much as possible if you can take a step back look at the entire life cycle of what the impact is so that is kind of strategically how i look at it but more personally i think i've told my family that one of the steps we can take is not to order one item from amazon every day right and then to see if there's a way we can actually consolidate as a family to just order once a week i think somebody was telling how we used to go to the store i think ever since the pandemic kid we are so used to online ordering click of a button my 11 year old can go to my phone anytime and amazon's one click buy right that's all it takes right and then just return it if you don't want it so i think personally that is a policy we're instituting is reduce the number of purchases you're doing reduce the number of returns especially in us which is very prevalent but anyway jokes apart but it's really taking a more holistic view of things and looking at you know it from end to end life cycle as well Excellent. Thank you all so much. This is incredibly helpful. And I think that it's so wonderful to hear both that personal perspective, because I think all of us have our own individual responsibility. And it's also some of that passion and personal experience that I'm hearing from all of you that fuels also the way that you're bringing that into your work and the way that that deeply impacts or propels the work that you're doing, how you bring that into the organization, um, in your individual leadership roles and your technical expertise, and then also even sessions like this, how you're then helping bring that out into the world to, to proliferate that further. Um, and I think uh, Raj in particular, some of your comments there were, were really helpful in us thinking about kind of our next question and bringing it really down to this focus too here in PLUS where we're often supporting nascent or, or very early stage social enterprises and how sometimes those trade-offs might be really challenging um, thinking about current needs where are they going how are they balancing at you know that early stage wanting to be sustainable wanting to adopt that mindset or wanting to integrate that into their programming um, and fostering that from the beginning in organizational culture but those trade-offs might be difficult um, and I would just give one example. I don't think we've got anybody from the team on here right now, but I recently had a chance to reconnect actually in person um, with one of our 2019 plus alums um, who made a pivot and was really talking about the challenges they were experiencing from a sustainability lens. They from the beginning chose to be a certified B corporation, wanted that to be core to their business. They're focused on a, a climate adaptation solution with an invasive species um, that's having an impact on climate. and you know, in their work, he was talking about even the trade-offs for packaging, um, the product that they're producing, how are they remaining committed to that, even when it costs them about four times as much per individual package to ensure they're, you know, using a sustainable approach. And they're trying to look at it from every stage of that product life cycle um, that you all were mentioning. So maybe Raj, I can start with you on this one. Why is it important for even these early stage startups or a small business not just large organizations like HCL Tech to be thinking about this focus on sustainability and their work and at each level. No, absolutely. Listen, it's it's uh, like you said, it's it's a tough choice. It's always a compromise because if it was that easy and straightforward, everybody would be doing it, right? We're having this conversation because it's not that black and white. So I think for a startup or an early stage company as to why they should look at it, I would kind of put it in maybe like three or four buckets. So one is external influence right so if all of us you know we have this commitment so as any startup company you're still committed to make sure you're reducing the environmental footprint you are minimizing the negative impacts on the planet so there's an external impact that you need to focus on how do i do my share right to make the planet a better place that's number one but all of us no matter what we say are also inward focused right so we should be conscious of that too so even for each of these startups a focus on sustainability can also help them reduce their cost. 
it can help them with increasing their efficiency they can reduce the wastage then increase resource productivity so for them as a business financially this can actually lead them to be even more profitable and actually it has a very resilient business model in the long term for them right individually as a company as well so there's an external aspect of planet there's an internal aspect of financial benefits you know savings efficiency and then number three which is also very important as a startup is how do you differentiate yourself in the market right so investors consumers you know other b2b companies are all becoming increasingly aware of sustainability and so anytime you can actually come in with that lens of how your products whether it is directly helping with sustainability or even if it is not helping with sustainability how are you inculcating in that within your product or within your organization can help you differentiate in the market and that is something which is extremely important for a startup which is looking to get into the system or looking to scale and the last thing may not be as applicable depends on which region you are or which space you are is any compliance requirements or that automatically makes you want to be you know compliant right so that's a mandatory thing but i would really focus on external impact internal benefits to you and how you can differentiate in the market those are the top reasons why any company should look at it thank you so much that's incredibly helpful and very relevant rajesh from your perspective sorry about that i didn't unmute it i was talking so i think pretty much well said so if you look at it uh, whether whether you are doing uh, uh, enterprises, social enterprises, and especially it is very, very important for social enterprises. It is optionality for the social enterprises is, uh, transparency is not an optionality for the social enterprises. You actually have, as you look at it, most of your unleashed programs are uh, around social enterprises. You have taken a social cause or a purpose-driven organization, and you're trying to scale that up or you're in an early stage of designing that part of it. Now, when you want to be relevant and be credible and trustworthy, transparency is not an, you just can't live, live apart from a, uh, transparency because there are a lot of concerns around food safety, ethical sourcing, data security, environmental impact, and all of those sustainability topics. And it is extremely critical why organizations should look at in an early stage is that how they should be very transparent about how and what they're uh, collateral damages which the products are doing because it's never going to be a product is going to be 100 percent circular we cannot we have not yet reached to a stage where we can create a perfectly balancing nature natural system where it is actually self-balancing and self-healing by its own right so whatever anthropogenic activity which we do will have some negative side effects but how do you measure those side effects how do you transparently communicate about it and what actions are you taking to continuously make a progress towards it how you are funded how are your ethical practices is extremely important i think the other important thing what is happening is that the trickle down effect is happening so as uh, raj mentioned that there are compliance requirements but in a globally connected economy uh, the comply and a globally connected uh, trade ecosystem the large corporates are being forced to actually understand their source to sink part of the entire supply chain. And when it is a source to sink supply chain, you become a part and parcel within the overall spectrum as one of the uh, providers to these large businesses. So in order to have uh, access to large businesses, a uh, lot of these large businesses are actually talking about the supplier code of businesses or sustainability engagement or companies like Nestle or Bristol Myers actually do anchoring of the investments with some of their suppliers to make their products or services which they acquire to be more sustainable. Uh, the other thing is that in order to, for the social enterprises or for any enterprise for that matter, it is important to attract and retain the talent and engage the talent. Uh, so obviously there is, uh, there is a enough amount of research which is available which says that two thirds of the young talent today wants to work for the sustainable companies. One third people are willing to really let go, forego some of the salary for a, being a more environmentally and social companies. Uh, having said that, the last point which I would like to re-emphasize is that the impact which the social and the small enterprises can make is massive, depending upon which country we are talking about. But there is a research from the IFAC which says is that about close to 60 to 65% of the GDP today is coming from the small and medium enterprises. 
and close to 80% or 85% of the people are actually employed in the small and medium enterprises. So I think it's a responsibility of the small and medium enterprises just not to look at from a compliance lens, which is coming on a larger organizations, because you as a part of the overall community is still a significant more than 50% of the planet and uh, its prosperity from a social, social perspective. And that's why it's very, very critical uh, that small enterprises should also look certainly at sustainability. Thank you so much. I think that's so incredibly helpful. And I think I would even really encourage that no matter what your solution is and what you're talking about, I think, Rajesh, the way that you're framing that, whether it's a service, a product offering, no matter where you are in the world, we all also are part of that source to sync mindset. We each play a role. So thank you for sharing that. And that, that way, I think that hits home for a lot of us. And Deepak, over to you. All right. As rightly said, Raj, I think uh, today, if you see, uh, though we are in a very, you know, uh, exciting times today. Uh, it is rather difficult to say that 84% uh, of our total energy consumption is basically from the natural resources today. So it's coming from oil and uh, coal and uh, natural gas. And uh, only 11% of that energy is from the renewable sources. And uh, so every drop counts, right? So every small startup, every organization that works towards this goal. Uh, it is very important to focus from that perspective and not it's not always profit that is uh, there. Uh, and uh, when it comes to, so when I talk about profit, it is, I have to talk about the relationship. So when, when it comes to that relationship, so when, whether it is product relationship or whether the startup relationship that that you have in that ecosystem. Nature, if I compare this with nature, you know, when there is a species that is dominating, it is being controlled by nature. So there is an ecosystem that exists in the nature, which is automatically controlling that. But uh, when it comes to a product that is there, we need to understand that ecosystem and how is that value that, that is exchanged between these uh, various uh, stakeholders in that ecosystem. So it is not always profit. So sometimes uh, you, uh, you exchange profit in terms of money. Sometimes it could be uh, something related to good. Sometimes it will be digital data. Uh, it will be information. So we need to understand what that relationship is, what that ecosystem is. And, uh, and by combining these ecosystems together, and we don't want to reinvent the wheel, right? When somebody has already reinvented that for someone and they have mastered it, we want to utilize that. And we'll have to look at opportunities where we can utilize some of those existing e ecosystems when it comes to that product life cycle or uh, uh, how do we le leverage and be part of that existing ecosystem that already exists and connect that ecosystems together and be a small drop in the ocean towards, you know, uh, that uh, move towards sustainability. Thank you for sharing that. And I love that focus on ecosystems and, and your focus previously also on collaboration, because I think it's so true. Even any individual organization, we're not in it alone. And I think especially as a startup, it can be so easy to be laser focused on what you're trying to do and sometimes not take that moment to take the step back and think about how what you're doing maybe fits in or how you can leverage and build on maybe other innovations or other things happening. Thank you for that. Right. And Christina, over to you. I think, you know, my colleagues have have already said it all, but the one area that, that I've found over the last couple of years, which has been really quite mind boggling, is the approach that, you know, the younger generation is taking when they enter the workforce or change their, their career sort of, you know, as they start. Um, and what I've found is that when when I interview, you know, people to to come and join HCL Tech, the questions that they ask of me as an HCL tech, you know, leader are very, very different than when I started, you know, many moons ago. Um, and now it's really about what is your sustainable strategy? How are you enabling me as a person uh, to be, you know, sustainable in the organization? How do we take that forward? So I think that's one of the key shifts that we've seen in the market is that 
the next generations have a very different mindset, a very different way of wanting to work, and they're very vocal. So they're not going to sit there and say, thank you very much for giving me a job. Um, it's more about, I'm sorry, I don't think I'm the right fit for you because you don't have the same kind of vision as I do as, as a starter. And, and that's why I think, you know, especially these innovative um, startups, these tech startups are so crucial because they already bring that element. So they, they have a unique opportunity as a startup to really focus on using sustainability as a lens and, and making it their core, because this is what companies are looking for. This is what corporates are looking for. Every time I get asked for a sustainability uh, question from our clients, because they're asking us for input, it really is becoming more and more important that we are able to say, yes, we are a sustainable company. And yes, we have you know, those types of ecosystems that enable us to, to craft a solution that might be relevant for that particular customer. And I think that's, that's really what it boils down to for me is that these, these innovations and these innovative startups really have a very different way of working, very different approach to working um, and have a, a different lens as to how they can create an impact not only for themselves, but for the, you know, for the, the, the wider world. So I think people and startups and how we enable that is, is hugely important. Thank you for sharing that. And, you know, I think one thing that really strikes me and, and in my work in partnerships and especially working on, on some of this, even with university partners and hearing professors talking about that evolution and some conversations recently is also that Sometimes I think, especially when we're tackling these very large, maybe wicked problems, people sometimes call them, it can feel like, how do you make an impact? Yet in each one of your remarks and what I hear from so many people is actually even individual demand and calling out these things and making it a priority is actually having an impact. It's swaying the conversation. It is forcing even very large global companies. Um, even if the companies are interested, there's also that push and pull um, of individuals and the talent having a role. And I think, you know, as a startup, maybe sometimes it can be intimidating and you feel like, you know, how are we going to have an impact there? But even all of you, your this expertise coming from a very large organization that functions all over the world, you're even talking about how you're seeing that at so many different levels. And so I hope for all of you thinking about a startup where you're already launching your organization, you are seeing that that impact that you can have and the way that you can start to drive change in your individual work. Um, and so we're so excited to have you all here and bring in this deep technical expertise. And our next activity is really that chance to do some breakout sessions uh, with you all. So I think for kind of our final questions together in the panel, I'd like to have each one of you maybe just have a little bit more focus on kind of what can participants ask uh, you about individually? Each one of you is bringing some deep technical expertise in different areas, and you've already been sharing a lot of that wonderful insight with us. Um, but in this question, I might just come like a little bit more practical and, and ask you to briefly share a bit more about individually, what could teams maybe think about asking you or what could they look to your expertise for? Um, so that way, when we go into the breakouts, they have a little bit of a sense of what to expect and have some targeted conversations with that time. I mean, here, I'm just going to switch up the order a little bit. And Rajesh, I'm going to go to you first. Um, you have a lot of expertise in finance, investment strategy, um, and a lot of our teams and a lot of social enterprises. This is obviously a, an important element for them. So how can they really think about uh, what you can offer or what they might be able to ask you about prioritizing sustainability in this way through these kind of key areas? Yep. Yeah. yeah, so... Uh... Obviously, so the thing is that when you talk about financial aspects of it, I spoke about briefly about the externality and uh, Raj did speak about the uh, aspect of trade-offs. Now, when you're talking about cost and revenues uh, and when you're talking about in the context of the sustainability, and I think you were talking about an early example in terms of saying that a packaging which is costing more, four times more versus a packaging which doesn't cost more, four times more, which one should I take in? So there are all these kind of difficult, wicked trade-offs trade which needs to happen from a cost and revenue perspective, from a running part of the organization perspective. But as you go through with it, also for the social enterprises, where do you look for the uh, additional financing? Because there's a lot of money, money available in the world today in terms of where sustainable investing is happening. There are differences in terms of responsible, sustainable impact investing. And th these organizations being really about creating and social impact, 
what are the avenues which they can further explore in terms of getting a funding, uh, what the uh, venture capital and the private equity investors look at it from a point of view of when they look at these social enterprises in terms of how they create an impact, what are the sources of measuring impact, like there is a uh, GIN sponsored Iris Plus network, which actually allows you to measure the impact more appropriately, how the PEs look at it in terms of private equity or venture capital looks at it in terms of making sustainability due diligence critical part of their overall assessment process, uh, which is becoming a mandatory uh, thing uh, in the times to come. I think these are the areas we can certainly touch upon in the breakout session. Thank you so much. Um, that's incredibly helpful. And hopefully uh, folks are, are taking note a little bit as uh, you'll all be joining different breakout rooms. Uh, in Deepak, you bring deep technical expertise that you've been sharing a bit about in terms of user research, service design, the way that you're actually engaging in that human-centered design process. And we actively use that type of design thinking methodology in our innovation work with Unleash. Um, so how do you really help um, people think about adopting that mindset throughout that work. Right. So uh, anything, uh, anything uh, you can, uh, uh, anything related to user research, anything related to uh, design thinking processes, anything related to, uh, you know, deciding what technology do we use? Uh, because everything starts. The technology comes second. Right. So understanding the human needs and understanding that uh, value and understanding the stakeholders and what kind of environment is are we thriving and evolving and are what environment is the uh, is the need uh, that evolves is, uh, is is what basically feeds that technology and it makes a decision on what technology do you want a software solution today or are you looking at an artificial intelligence today solution today or uh, uh, what kind of uh, or is it even a is it even required is it technology even required there when you can solve the problem uh, you know a little more differently i don't know what could, whatever could be the problem there so uh, so these are areas that we focus on, and uh, we can we can talk about it, uh, uh, and uh, we can we can debate and talk about a lot of these things. Thank you so much, uh, and Christina. Um, I know you have a lot of deep technical expertise across different areas. So for you, I will um, you know look to to how you would like to approach this. But you know you have a lot of deep leadership experience as well, in, in addition to your um, kind of core role right now in sustainability. So maybe you can give kind of a preview of the various different things people might talk to you about. Oh gosh, I, I could talk for hours. Um... I think it's important to, I'm gonna answer that from a very, you know, slightly different perspective. I think um, it's, it's very important because everybody needs some kind of a mentor, some kind of a champion to help, you know, propel somebody's vision uh, maybe onto the next level of, of development. And, and I see, you know, not only having technical expertise, you know, to ensure that the solutions that get delivered are uh, relevant, but you see so many organizations and so many startups that have a very unique value proposition, but they get lost in this miasma of, of enormity and, and so many organizations. So I think one of the key aspects that I always tell, um, you know, some of my men, uh, mentees is you need to find your champion, find a champion who is going to help uh, create a path, open a door for you. Because I would say probably eight times out of 10, the, the, the proposals I receive um, are so relevant, but they may not be relevant for us. So it's about saying, okay, this could work for a company like so-and-so. Um, I think you know that networking, opening doors and having a voice is for me the most important because without being able to talk to the right people um, about something that, that you know, uh, an organization has has a passion in and can make an impact. I think that's hugely important. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, I mentioned the World Economic Forum four years ago, where we fir first had our first pavilion um, at HCL Tech, and I had never met Roshni, uh, who is our chairperson. 
and and she is the you know one of the the, the leaders of the HCL Foundation, and I was so impressed by what she said in just a one minute of discussion. She was giving a keynote that I actually took my own sort of um, you know embarrassment, and I I went up to her and I said hi. I, I would love to spend some more time with you. Can you please help me understand? Um, and it's overcoming that fear of, you know, this is somebody really senior and somebody who's got a lot of knowledge and understanding and as a celebrity, find that voice, go talk to people. It, it creates, it opens doors. And that's why I think, you know, it's important while you have technology as a background and as a foundation, don't forget about sharing your voice and don't forget about finding a mentor, finding a champion that is going to help you get to that next stage. That's it. Thank you. And also such a beautiful lead in uh, as we will be transitioning shortly to, to this phenomenal opportunity for, for our community to access individuals like yourselves. Uh, and I think honestly, this is one of the things that's so impactful about the Unleashed community um, are these incredible experts and partners and mentors and facilitators and also the talents, how you continue to engage in the community um, because you do have this phenomenal network of other humans and other people that are so passionate about work and that are coming from different parts of the world, different industries. So hopefully you can really take Christina's advice both today and as you're really joining that Unleashed community and, and staying involved. Um, and with that, Raj, I'm going to go over to you and, and would ask you to speak maybe a bit more about your go-to-market experience, really thinking about the way that you do market positioning and help organizations, especially today, maybe thinking about that social enterprise early stage. Absolutely. So just keep it short in the interest of time. So like given, you know, I do provide a lot of advisory services to startups. The main areas where I help, I'll say three things. One of them is the nuances of uh, the product strategy. So if they are trying to figure out what does the market want, understanding there's so many priorities to do, which one should I pick, voice of customer, that's bucket number one. Bucket number two is once you've identified your problem that you want to work on and go figuring it out, how do you go deliver it in a phased manner? Because you can't go boil the ocean in step one. So really laying out that phased approach in terms of taking the product and building the product and number three which is the most important one is around the commercialization or monetization of your product so that is where the whole entire go to market strategy comes how do i build a broader partner ecosystem so all of that so those are the top three areas um and i also you know i always see if anybody is you know, i'm i didn't say it in the beginning but i'm also a very avid runner so if there are any people out there who is trying to run a marathon then hit me up i have a lot of war stories we can discuss as well so you know those are the key topics Oh, thank you all so much. And also, I just have to say, I so appreciate um, the humor and the the lovely <laughs> energy that you bring uh, to this, because I think, of course, these can be heavy topics and um, a lot of things. And in our sessions, especially online, I think it's just so nice to actually feel connected among that person level and have a chance to get to e know each of you individually as well and a bit more about who you are and what makes you you um, and then how you're translating that into your work. Um, so with this, I'm I'm so grateful um, and excited um, to, to have you all. We will kind of transition um, from the end of the panel here and want to take a moment to just thank each and every one of you for sharing your incredible insight, your advice, um, the deep technical expertise and life experience that you all bring and your passion for sustainability and impact and sharing that here with all of us and all of our participants today. So um, if anyone would like to take a moment and we'll, we'll continue our tradition from the PLUS program, if everyone would like to take a moment to unmute and we will say thank you in all of our local languages to, to our gratefulness for the panelists for being here. So one, two, three. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Kukubabar. Wonderful. Um, I think maybe our permissions are maybe not letting people unmute, but thank you again to each of our panelists. We're so excited um, and we really appreciate all of the expertise that you've provided. And with that, I am going to hand over to my colleague Lakshmi to help us now talk about the next session and how we're going to approach the breakouts and how and the rest of our participants have a chance to actually engage with each of you a little bit uh, more deeply on your areas of technical expertise. So thank you again. And Lakshmi, over to you. Thank you, Ariel, and thank you so much to the panelists. Um, I think we all wish that we could have heard longer from them, but we do have a unique opportunity to spend some time with them one-on-one -on -one, uh, in different breakout rooms where you can 
um, understand more about what sustainability means in each of their expertise areas when it comes to your own solutions and challenges, because we want to make sure that this is as relevant to all of the work that all of you are doing. Um, and to facilitate that interaction, uh, we will be going into four different breakout sessions. Uh, given the, the limited time and um, the, the large audience that we uh, are lucky to have today, we have um, pre-assigned you to different uh, breakout rooms. And in each of the breakout rooms will be one HCL tech expert and one uh, plus team member to help facilitate uh, the sessions. Each expert um, is, is there on the platform to engage with you uh, in an open Q&A sort of format. Uh, and they're here to share their ad advice and their, um, their wisdom with you. Uh, I hope you've taken note of the different areas that would be most useful to talk to them about. I have also recapped uh, the key uh, topics that you can speak to them about in the chat. What we do ask you to do is to um, try to ask questions that might be applicable to um, a large number of people in your room so that it is something that remains useful and relevant uh, for all of you. And we ask that you not go into too many specific details uh, if you have a very unique uh, use case or challenge that you want to talk through. Uh, if you do want to have more um, detailed conversations, that's something uh, that we would have to do after um, this workshop. But today we really want to use the next 20 minutes uh, really well to understand in more detail about investment strategy, uh, user research, go-to-market um, strategy and positioning, and how this actually fundamentally makes an impact on how sustainable we are at organizations uh, of all stages. We also um, ask that you create a positive engagement and environment for all of those in your room. This is something that's very important to us as the Unleashed community, that we all be active listeners and we create a safe and comfortable space for everyone to participate uh, in each of the rooms. Um, and, and with that, if there are no questions, uh, I think we're ready to go into the breakout rooms. If you have uh, any questions, feel free to put them on the chat right now. Uh, and Ariel, uh, you let us know when we're ready to go into the breakout rooms. Thank you so much. I'm gonna go ahead and open the rooms in just a moment. Um, you should, in theory, uh, if the tech is on our side, I'll be pushed to different rooms. And then Christina and I will be in this main room. Um, so folks also have the option to either stay in this main room or some of you should automatically stay here if everything is working accordingly um, and then have a little bit of flexibility to move. But um, you all should be pushed to individual rooms um, and have a chance to engage with those experts. And since we are a little short on time, uh, we encourage you all uh, with your individual Unleash moderator and expert to, to jump right in and maximize that time together. So I'm going to open the rooms and then please utilize the chat um, with us, um, especially me and, and Christina here in the main room in the event that you need any support. Um, so that way we can still maximize the expert time. I'm going to open now. Thanks, Lakshmi. All right, you all should be progressively starting to, to move. Um, and then... Lakshmi and and folks, um, I may actually need to. I think I actually need to push uh, individual experts. So I'm going to be sending you all if you're not able to join yourselves. But Christina, I'll ask you to stay here with me. Um, and then, folks in the main room. Um, well, actually, I guess yeah. So if you're in the main room, I'm at this time, not quite able to see as the rooms are still going, but I am gonna go ahead and stop sharing the screen. Um, or maybe we already did stop just so that we can actually see Christina. Um, but maybe in the interest of time, uh, Christina, we can go ahead and have you, um, we can see if there are any questions yet with folks. And please, um, I ask for, I guess, patience with everyone as we work through any tech challenges. We're used to doing this for our plus teams, but today we've got a pretty diverse group. So I'm not sure of everyone's familiarity with our processes. And I can see um, 
maybe a little bit of the chat, but does does anyone in this main room um, have a question for Christina that you would like to kick off? And if you're not, you should be able to unmute, but if you're not, please feel free to also use the chat. I can't see any of the chat. I'm trying to see if I can get to that. I am nope. not seeing um, the chat, um, but maybe I'll just take a uh, liberty as as a moderator and anyone on the on the call. Please feel free to to unmute or raise your hand or or post in the 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 chat itself. I really want this time to be useful to you. Uh, but Christine, I think you know from my perspective, I would really love to also hear more from you um, in terms of what it means to actually lead. Um, from a sustainability lens and some of the experiences or maybe challenges even that you've had in kind of playing that leadership role, especially as many of our teams, uh, we often are working with founders um, and those that are really responsible for kind of building out a high performing team, for sourcing talent, for leading that direction and maybe inspiring others. Um, and you have a lot of deep leadership expertise across industries and across the world. I think, you know, trying to get to, to a certain position, I think it's very, very challenging being able to get that experience and, and, and that alliance is, is not an easy step. And not many companies really, uh, you know, really understand why sustain, why do they need to implement sustainability? And sustain, sustainability really is, uh, it, it's a long-term approach. It's really about completely shifting uh, your vision and the way you've behaved in the past and how you're going to have to behave for the future. Um, and, and having, you know, coming from, from a diverse background, I've lived in a lot of different countries with a lot of different cultural, um, you know, nuances that I've been lucky enough to experience. That's something, as much experience as you can get with understanding different cultures will be helpful, you know, kind of working your way through a corporate because it really is about how do I make my priorities somebody else's priority? How do I ensure that what I'm talking about is relevant for the organization and it's not just a, a nice to have? Many companies and many people, there's a trend in the industry that talk about greenwashing. It's, it's very similar like, like whitewashing where you kind of just talk about it, but you don't really do anything. Um, and that's something that for us at HCL Tech is very different. Um, it's taken us quite some time to get to where we are today. Um, and it really is about, and we learn every day. It's not like we know everything. We actually learn every day. And I actually took some notes uh, throughout this, this um, you know, session today. But it's about understanding how it's going to, to unleash opportunity. So I'm taking that uh, word now as well. It's about how, how we can uh, you know, supercharge that. How can we ensure that this strategy is understood. And it's not so simple as, okay, we're gonna get rid of all the plastic in our office. That's not enough. It's a start, but it's certainly not enough. Um, and, and so I think education and awareness is probably the biggest hurdle that anybody has to overcome because everybody has a different standpoint and everybody comes from a different perspective. And being able to uh, you know, create some content that is understandable and that people can sit there and say, okay, that's relevant to me as an individual because it's, we're all individuals. However, we, we work for the corporate, but we're all individuals. So all of us, all the millions of people who work in companies, big, middle or small, we all have that impact. And it, it really does, I used to have this, this image where it says, you know, every little person can create an impact. Imagine, imagine if every one of us just did a little bit of a sustainable impact. I'm not going to use the straw when I go to a restaurant. Um, I'm not going to take uh, you know, plastic uh, anywhere. Uh, I'm not going to waste paper by printing out all these documents that I don't need. So it's little things like that, which will make a huge difference, but it starts with the individual. I know it's a slightly different answer. No, that's incredibly helpful. And I think it's also so important um, to, to all of us to remember. And I actually really love that this is kind of a theme that has emerged throughout the conversation so far is really that 
you know, I think it's so easy to point to like the really big organizations, the big companies or even big countries and, and want to think that that can be a wholesale solution. If they would just do this thing, we're going to be able to solve this and really bringing it back to like, we each have a role to play, um, even as individuals. Um, so thank you for that. And I think you just have such phenomenal expertise uh, to bring to that and insight because you've also been seeing this and experiencing it and looking at it in a way that I think sometimes, you know, maybe we're not all doing on our on a daily basis or in our daily lives. Um, so I do want to to ask again quickly. I mean, I've got I could ask Christina questions all day, but is there anybody in the room uh, or on the chat that would like to ask any questions? You're very welcome to unmute. And then Christina, just for reference as well, um, people have the some flexibility to jump around. So some of this, um, you know, I, I don't fully control, but this main room as well, also gonna stay on the recording. So <laughs> if nothing else, I will um, definitely have some more questions or invite you if there are things that you would like to touch on because this will be sent out to, to all of our folks, especially those who couldn't join today. I'm not... I'm not seeing any uh, specific other questions right now, but I do invite anybody else to please feel free to jump in. This These breakouts are meant to also be useful um, for you all. But Christina, I would, you know, I've been pestering you with some questions throughout and I definitely have more, but I would ask from your side, are there things that we haven't talked about yet or something that for you really jumps out that you would want an opportunity to maybe convey or relate to people that we just, we haven't quite gotten there yet? Um, I, I think it goes back to what I was saying a little bit earlier, um, and I look at, you know, how over the past couple of years at HCL Tech, you know, the, there's been a real fundamental shift in, in, in wanting to do more and, and wanting to understand better on how they can do something in, in let's say, Poland versus the U.S. versus Australia versus Timbuktu. Um, and what we've started is, is really working with the individual countries. And uh, in Europe, for example, we, we have our EMEA CSR councils where the teams go out and look at what is relevant to them in their country. In the Nordics, for example, you know, we have a huge focus on you know, gender diversity as well as you know, clean up the beach, um, you know, saving the trees. So, and, and, and you know, Poland, Ukraine, et cetera, over the last you know, war, We've, we've really been able to very quickly shift and, and create some support mechanisms for people in need. And, and I, I mentioned it earlier in my presentation, um, you know, when there's a crisis around the world, we're very quick to be able to support and deliver if it's technology, if it's money, if it's, if it's expertise, we really want to be able to support a crisis that, that you know, is affecting so many people. We did it during COVID. We, we, we've already done that for, you know, the Ukraine war. Um, so it's not just looking at, you know, how we can do things. It's really about, you know, what is going to be relevant to, to us in, in, in different countries. South Africa, uh, very much around, you know, wildlife conservation, um, which is why I live here. Um, but it's, it's really also looking at while as a company, uh, we, we do, we are aligned to the United Nations Global Compact with the 17 SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. And, and what we've done is, is we really try to look at, do we follow all 17 goals in every country? And can we realistically do that? Or do we articulate and say, maybe we just as a company focus on two or three or six um, because we don't have the same kind of resources in India versus South Africa versus Germany. So we really try to combine what's relevant for the company where do we focus as you know a company? What is what is important to us? Be it around education, be it around skills development, um, and then we 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 replicate that and make it accessible to our countries to say, does this fit into what is relevant to you? And you know you can choose. So everything has an impact. So every little thing has an impact, and it starts with one person. Um, if I can talk to somebody uh, at the corridor. Um, around the, you know, the water cooler and say, hey, you know, I did this and would you like to come? And then you find that this creates a snowball effect where more and more people are interested. Oh yeah, I'd love to do that. So it's really becoming an ambassador ourselves, every one of us um, and, and sharing ideas. 
I really love that. And thank you for sharing that. And I think, you know, even from a personal perspective, especially some of just that end part of what you were saying is kind of making me almost not laugh a little bit, but it's interesting reflecting on even my experiences at Comonics and something that immediately came to mind um, is we recently built a new building throughout the pandemic um, and, and worked with the city of Washington, D.C. and the U.S. on that process. And we were really focused on making that a sustainable building and all of the different elements and so much of that, of course, we're a purpose-driven organization. We want to play a role, but also a lot of it was employee charged. And something that made me start to giggle when you talk about the water cooler is thinking about, there was also this huge push for many of us as employees about compost. Um, and that was something in the old building. It was just a very old building. And a lot of the systems that were provided in there made it very challenging. So many employees pushed that for us, that was like a key thing we felt was critical to have in a new building and to really align and make sure. And it's that individual level and then how the organization's making itself open to that. And it's just really neat to, to see that and to hear from your leadership perspective, how you are kind of creating that space or helping to foster that. Um, and I might, unless I'm not seeing any questions in the chat or any hands, I might just take the liberty of maybe asking, you briefly mentioned something about a new employee program and something internally that you all are doing. And I didn't quite catch maybe some of the details, but would you like to speak about that a bit more? Because it seemed maybe a little bit of a, in addition to the corporate things that you all are doing and the way that you're working with clients, this seemed perhaps even more focused on the individual level and what HCL Tech is providing as an opportunity. Um, I think you're you're referring to the training that we developed. Yeah, you mentioned action. something about a, a training, exactly. Right. So, so we, we realized that, you know, and we're quite lucky because, you know, that marketing term of push and pull people want it, you're pushing out information, but people are pulling it from you. And we've really, you know, been able to um, do both with this, this training that we've developed. And we started with climate action because that is probably the most important aspect of any kind of a sustainability strategy is like, what is climate action? Why is it so important? Uh, what is it that I need to do and be able to talk about when I speak to my clients and, and external stakeholders? So we worked with, with a company called AXA School of Climate to develop a bespoke training. Um, and it's an education course. It's very interactive. It's got videos. It's got quizzes um, that we were able to deliver out. And I think in the first couple of weeks, we had uh, over 4,000 employees that have already taken the course. Not enough, not enough, because we're 200,000 employees, but we're, we're on a really good trajectory to be able to address the, um, the lack of understanding. And the feedback that we've received, and, and, and that was so heartwarming, is because it's, the feedback was everything from, I took this training and I did it again with my kids um, so that they get that understanding. Um, and, and you know, more and more we're getting that request. Can I give it to my client? I'm like, no, it's for HCL employees, um, but it's really something that is helping to shift uh, an understanding and an awareness. And, and you know, as we go through, it's the first uh, part of our training that around sustain sustainability. But what we really want to do is be able to identify certain areas, maybe something around social uh, as a next step or something around you know, governance. Um, all these things that are so relevant as part of a sustainability strategy and, and how you're going to be held accountable and be compliant. Uh, we found that this, this, this education need is something that we really need to develop much more um, as opposed to these, these very boring mandatory trainings. I've got my you know, InfoSec security training, which you just kind of sit through and you just flip the pages. Whereas this training, we were very keen. First of all, we made it, it it's not mandatory. Um, so it's not mandatory to attend this training. We're making it open to everybody at HCL, but we are we are kind of pushing our leadership teams to push it to their teams. Um, and in order to help that, we just launched a week ago, two weeks ago, uh, we just launched a competition. So what we're asking for is for teams of five to come together and and drive, um, you know, some some climate action solutions and ideation and being able to drive that through. And in fact, actually my colleague Siddhartha, um, who's an Unleash um, alumni, um, he's driving all of that. So it's it's because of his input and, and drive that we're getting, getting more and more in, in front of people to 
understand climate action a lot better. This is just awesome. I'm, I'm just every single part of what you're saying is just so exciting to me. And, and i uh, really excited to hear about that. I, in particular, have worked a lot of on our partnerships and in working with partnerships also to bring education to our global staff. So I have to even say just from the, yeah, I know when you're looking at your total numbers, I understand 4,000 may not be the, the target that you're going for, but we're about 5,000 globally at Comonix and pretty incredible to hear that in a voluntary program that quickly you had 4,000 people taking it. And I think that just both speaks to the passion and, and the cultural um, importance that you've instilled within HCL tech and in across HCL group of sustainability. Um, and then also love hearing about both the entrepreneur opportunities that you're developing to help drive, as well as the importance of leadership continuing right. to foster that. Um, and so is your, your colleague uh, that you mentioned, who's an Unleash alum, was this individual part of this process to begin with? Or is this something that you feel like their Unleash experience uh, kind of helped supercharge these ideas? No, around, like, he, I don't know. He, he said he wanted to go on this Unleash program. I'd never heard of it, I have to say. Um, and he was part of the India cohort a couple of months ago and um, loved it. He thought it was such a phenomenal opportunity for ideation to get ideas from different people etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, and and that's when uh, you know he was already driving our training thing but it's really I think it really helped to add more passion into delivering that and I think any kind of a training or uh, you know where you have to sit through something and it gets boring very very quickly so I think the reason why this training or this education program is big is different is because it's so interactive. It really has, you know, real life experiences. And, 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 and what's even more important is that that word of mouth by the water cooler. Um, people are talking about that. I did this cool training. Can you believe it? Um, and, and that word of mouth, I think has also helped a lot. That's incredible. And I com completely agree. And I think, um, you know, we joke sometimes even like the virtual water cooler and, you know, people still talking to each other and still extending that. But I think you're absolutely right. If somebody has a positive experience or they felt really engaged or excited and energized by something they did, especially in a company, uh, when people are looking for those opportunities to connect on things. Um, yeah. That's that's really awesome. And I congratulate you all. That's that's very exciting. And I look forward to seeing and hearing more about it um, as you continue and hopefully share out with uh, the rest of the community on things. Um, I do know I'm going to be asked to, to close these rooms shortly, but I'm going to quickly take the liberty to ask you if you could briefly maybe speak a little bit about the gender lens. Um, I was so inspired reading uh, this really deep bio I found of you on the internet while researching a little bit to, to prepare. And I just thought it was really incredible to read about your own individual experience and maybe how are you bringing sort of that gender lens as well also having been a woman in a sector that is traditionally pretty male dominant and, and how are you integrating that into your approach for leadership and setting that tone for sustainability? Oh, wow. That's a, that's a big question. Um, I think uh, first of all, first of all, I, I was very lucky growing up um, and, and living in different countries around the world my entire life. So as a child, when you go from country to country, you have no idea what you're getting into. You don't really understand who's who, who's who in the zoo and how do you kind of maneuver your way through. But that has enabled um, myself and my brother to really be very flexible in how we communicate and how we accept and understand. And I think accept and respect different cultures and different perspectives um, is something that is crucial to any way being able to drive a career forward. You have to be able to listen. You have to be able to accept something that's perhaps not of your opinion um, and be able to work, to work, to work around it. Um, I will tell you that it has not been easy as a woman in the IT industry at all. Um, and I've worked for Cisco, I've worked for Microsoft and you know, HCL Tech amongst others. And I have to say over the last couple of years, it's only been then that the gender lens or the diversity lens is becoming a little bit more relevant, um, which doesn't mean to say that we're anywhere near where I think we should be as you know, uh, 
personally. But I do think that with that kind of understanding and, and acceptance and being able to position why this is so important. I mean, there's research, research that shows you having women in the leadership team on the board will you know, increase your revenue, et cetera, et cetera. That's all well and good. But that's just you know, words on paper. How do you actually live that? Um, and it goes back to what I was saying earlier, is you really have to try and find a, an ambassador for you, a mentor who's going to try and help you uh, move into different directions. And it can be a man, it can be a woman, it doesn't really matter. But it, it really does help um, from a networking perspective. Uh, I know that at HCL Tech, we also have you know, women councils and women forums, um, which I presented to quite a lot with, but that's, that's something that has to happen. It needs to be driven. It's not that something that's going to happen kind of overnight. It needs dedication um, and it needs a long-term dedication. Thank you so much for answering that so beautifully and sharing that perspective. And I'm sure you've seen that we've closed the rooms, but I, I will say that we'll, we'll have to invite you back as well to engage with us on one of our uh, workshops that we're hosting on a gender series and a special spotlight that we've been uh, started this last year, um, because I think it's just incredible. And thanks for taking a moment to share that. And welcome back to everyone else. Hopefully you'll also get a chance to, to hear the recording later of this great conversation that we've been having in this room. And I hope that you all had really positive conversations in yours as well. And with this, I'm going to also hand over to Lakshmi to help close us out. And thank you again to each of our experts. Over to you, Lakshmi. Thank you so much, Ariel. And I really want to take the time to <clears throat> thank all of our experts for making themselves available and uh, answering so many questions. Uh, and I really want to thank uh, our audience as well, that you have been really um, wonderful, active listeners, and you've asked some great questions. Uh, and now we would like to hear a bit of your voices as well, uh, in terms of what were your reflections, uh, if you want to share with the groups. So I'll ask you to raise your hand uh, if any of you are ready to share about your reflections from today. Uh, Adrian, please go ahead. Yeah, and everyone's feeling nervous today, I guess. Um, so for me, I was in Rajesh's um, breakout room. And for me, um, it, 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 it's quite nice to hear of some of the mechanisms for potential funding for social entrepreneurs. Um, I'm actually actually researching some of them right now as we speak, um, and I I got a little bit of the last session with um, Christina, um, and it, yeah, I I I I find our interventions quite useful um, um, as a as a person who grew up in youth leadership in Jamaica. Um, if I didn't have those persons opening those doors for me, um, it, it would have been very difficult. Um, and uh, yeah, um, we, as we go through life, we still need those persons to help us open those doors. So um, thank you again, Christina. Um, and uh, um, I'll hand it back over to you. Thanks so much for sharing that, Adrian. Um... It's wonderful to hear that you were able to find uh, the right people to, to mentor and champion your journey at the right time. Uh, and to those of you who don't know, Adrian is actually um, used to be a part uh, of the Unleash Plus program as uh, a startup team member, and then has also grown to be a wonderful mentor to other uh, teams that have come up. Uh, and we have one more question. Unfortunately, I can't see the name. Supergirls, Prayog, please oh, go hi. ahead. I, I just wanted to share something. Uh, always great to connect back with the community. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. And I think uh, one of the things I'm taking back today is what Raj shared in the breakout room is that early stage startup, especially, they shouldn't think of sustainability just for the heck of it. But then is it actually solving a problem and adding value to the customers? Uh, then think about it, especially when it's a financial decision for a lease seed startup. So I think that's something very important. Uh, and thank you for sharing that. That's uh, that's one of the great learnings I'm taking back. Thank you. Thanks so much for sharing that, 
prayer. Any other reflections? Yeah, hi. This is uh, Riti this side. I'm from India and I'm part of HCL Foundation team. And I feel really privileged to uh, listen about the different perspective of sustainability, like talking in terms, not only on the environment front, but also on the front uh, wherein uh, how HCL is looking forward in terms of the investment, the different products while in fact uh, putting money into. Uh, so this session was really interesting and thank you for the insight. Thank you so much, Riti, and it's wonderful to see someone from the HCL Foundation as well uh, joining and, and really uh, proving that HCL is, is walking the talk in so many ways. Unfortunately, we will have time only for one more question. Uh, Aishwarya, I saw your hand up first. Yes, thank you so much, Lakshmi, for passing the mic. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, all the speakers, for this wonderful session. Uh, a couple of takeaways for me during these during this session. One was uh, that how corporates are recognizing their responsibility, you know, in uh, changing the narrative around sustainability and contributing their bit. Because as we all know, corporates are the uh, main people who are or, or institutions who are contributing to, you know, environmental crisis. So it's great to see that corporates are taking their responsibility and uh, trying to change things. Another important takeaway for me was I attended Deepak's session was that, you know, how uh, it's important to follow an inter-stakeholder approach, you know, to understand the needs of different stakeholders, the middle, the middleman or uh, the user uh, or the company or the people who are you are catering to. And then in that sense, try to visualize a solution and then to actually, you know, to cater to everyone's needs. So I think it's, it's interesting to see such a shift happening to reach sustainable uh, development goal solutions. So thank you everyone for the workshop. Thank you so much Aishwarya for sharing that. Um, and Andrew and Fontip, if you want to share your reflections in the chat, I would really love to hear them. Uh, we have reached um, time in terms of the workshop. So I really want to thank you all for your patience and for your active engagement up until this point. Um, and before we say goodbye um, to the experts, I wanted to share um, a couple of my reflections as well as um, invite the experts to let us know in the chat uh, how they would like to be engaged with uh, in the future. As you can see, all four of them are incredibly passionate about uh, this subject, whether it comes to their job, whether it comes to their personal lives. Uh, and it's it's taken a lot for them to to reach where they are. And yes. as a community, we are so grateful uh, to you, and we would love to know how we can uh, engage with you in the future. Of course, absolutely no uh, obligation uh, for you to uh, make yourself available for any kind of one on one sessions. Um, but with that, my my reflection from today was really, what are the additional lenses uh, that we can think about when we are developing solutions, whether we're in a really early stage or how do we kind of pivot uh, from all of our core cost considerations, uh, how we design products and solutions, how we're looking at customers, uh, what we're defining as targets. And what really stuck with me is that at the end of the day, whatever we're doing, whether we are a technology company, whether we are someone who manufactures clothes or, or any other uh, product or solution, does it really matter unless we have a planet to live on? And does, does it matter unless we have a society in which we like to live in, which is equitable to people from all kinds of races? That's where a lot of gender um, diversity and equity uh, initiatives are incredibly important to the holistic uh, view of sustainability as well. And how all of the work that we do individually uh, in sustainability cannot be institutionalized and therefore taken forward to future generations unless we engage with the local governing bodies as well. And I will invite all of you to take to really take the uh, examples that different people in HCL Tech have set for us and make yourselves uh, accountable, publish information, publish your goals, let your community uh, hold you accountable. Make sure that um, 
wherever you have power in the world, whether you're a small organization, whether you're still at an idea stage, that you're actually using your actions to influence others, that you are really mindfully making decisions about what you spend your money on. Are you spending on something that is going to end a planet for future generations or are you in investing in something in the future? Are you designing your products in such a way that they really meet your users' needs or meet perhaps your greed's needs? And are you really looking at um, user research when you are uh, developing your solutions? And the deeper you go into understanding the user, you are able to uh, design solutions that actually uh, meet their specific need and not things which are perhaps more wasteful based on different uh, assumptions. So with that, um, I, I really, really want to thank all of you again for your active participation to the entire Unleashed community for all of the steps that you are already taking, for all of the efforts that you take to make Unleash uh, accountable to uh, the world, the promises that we make as well. And, and we really just want to thank you so much um, for that. Um, and along with that, we also want to let you know what uh, is coming up for you this year. Those of you who are new to the Unleash community, we have a couple of different uh, workshops and initiatives to help you take forward your passion um, for sustainability, to really understand how you can uh, prototype uh, your ideas and take them out to the communities. Um, since we have reached time, if anyone needs to drop off, especially the HCL tech experts, thank you so much for your patience and for your presence with us. So there's absolutely no pressure for you to stay on beyond this point. We just wanted to provide some uh, additional information about opportunities uh, that are upcoming. So this year we had uh, various different Unleash programs happening all around the world. We had Unleash Hacks. We had the uh, Global Innovation Lab, which took place in Mysore in December. We had the Greenland Regional Lab, which took place uh, in August. And we also had the Unleash Plus uh, incubation program that ran uh, through the half of, of last year. And we have a really exciting uh, opportunity for um, the all of the talents who have attended all the 2022 programs in a workshop called bringing your idea to life and what this workshop is will be a two-hour interactive session uh, which we have tailored to you uh, all of the participants of 2022 um, and we ask that those of you who are joining are dedicated to your solutions, whether you're an individual or perhaps you have already formed a team. And if you're interested in uh, engaging with Unleash further, this workshop will give you the opportunity to meet potential new team members if you're still figuring out uh, which team members uh, will be best for your idea. Uh, and together we will learn how to develop our solution really to that next step. So we've received a lot of questions uh, about, you know, what happens after Unleash, what happens with all the great ideas and discussions that we've come up with. And we really want to provide you with some guidance on how you can take that forward. And whatever your goal may be, the workshop will have something to offer for you in terms of continuing your mission of creating a positive inf uh, impact. Um, and we ask that you look out for more information uh, and invites, which will be coming uh, in, the, in the next couple of weeks. Pay attention to your email inbox, uh, as well as you can follow us on social media, uh, and we will let you know about this as well. Um, and finally, if you are really excited, passionate, and serious about bringing your idea um, to life and actually deploying a solution, we would ask you to consider joining us for the Unleash Plus incubation program in 2023. Uh, we will be sharing more details about this very soon, and we look forward to seeing many of you uh, actually uh, come through Unleash Plus and launch many of your incredible ideas uh, into the world as well. So with that, we are, are super grateful for all of you for, for showing up today. Thank you for giving us your time and your commitment uh, to sustainability.
I also want to open it up to, to Raj or Ariel or Bryce, uh, if you'd like to say a few words to thank and help us close. I completely echo that what Lakshmi says. And once again, a very, very, very warm welcome. Thank you, everyone. It's so good to see all the community members again, such vibrant energy, kind of recoupling the moments from labs, from plus programs, from hackathons, from ambassador program. Uh, thank you. Just wanted to thank you from the bottom of our community's heart uh, to make sure that you keep coming to Unleash and always remember that the doors are open. So any program, anything that we can support you with, your ideas, your solutions, your innovations, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. And very important, make sure you're active on the community platform where we keep posting a lot of exciting opportunities and you also are welcome to keep posting any opportunities, any exciting news from your solutions, your ideas there. Once again, thank you very, very, very much, everyone. Bryce, no pressure, but want to give you a chance if you wanted to jump in with any reflections. No, just to thank everybody once again, this was absolutely fascinating and it's always great to hear some new voices from outside the plus community as well and, and to bring these fantastic experts uh, to, to support all of these phenomenal startups. So yeah, thanks everybody. Thank you so much and really want to give, I know we're, we're over time and anyone who needs to drop, please continue to do so. But before we do officially close, I also really want to call out Lakshmi and thank her so incredibly much for her support in putting together this workshop in particular. Lakshmi has been helping to support and to design and, and work with our partners at HCL Tech throughout this entire process to make it so thoughtful and so engaging. So really want to give you an extra shout out and kudos. And as this is honestly, in many ways, kind of the culmination of our 2022 programming in some ways, and also setting the stage for our exciting future programming for 2023. Now that we're in the new year, want to just again, thank all of our plus 2022 participants, um, our teams, our mentors and our experts, because I know we actually have a mix of you even here today. Um, and then of course, our core team that's been supporting throughout, I think, um, it's just wonderful for a chance to see you all again in the new year. And hopefully, um, that you're still moving your solutions forward and that this was useful and engaging for you. And then for new community members, so exciting to see hundreds of you actually registered for this and following up with so much enthusiasm and excitement, both for staying involved with Unleash and for seeing the importance of sustainability and how you all can be thinking about putting sustainability lens and that mindset in the core of what you're doing. And then hopefully today, taking back some learning about what that can look like for you and how you don't have to just be a large organization, um, but even down to the individual level, like many of our experts reminded us, we each have a role to play and we can each have an impact in many different ways. And so thank you all so much for being here today. And we cannot wait uh, to see you in some of our future sessions. As Lakshmi said, we've got some exciting things coming up. And as Raj mentioned, really wanna reiterate, the importance of the Unleashed community. Get on that platform, stay on the lookout, look for your other Unleashed community members. Um, we also joke that Plus is like a little family, uh, you know, within the Unleashed community. So we hope to keep seeing you and reconnecting. And we're always here if you need anything. Happy to reconnect, happy to help. So thank you all and hope you have a wonderful rest of your Saturday day, morning, evening, wherever you're calling from. Thanks for being here. And thanks again, team and HCL Tech. We'll see you all soon. Thank you. Thanks.